Automation has really become a required tool of modern businesses and future-proof professionals. It multiplies your output and the quality of your work to help you stay ahead of the competition and advance your aspirations. But one of the questions I get most commonly is what to automate. So I'm going to break down the attributes to look for in your workflow that indicate an automation opportunity. Then we'll walk through 25 of the most common automation examples for a better sense of how those attributes manifest and to inform your own automation strategy. And for easy reference, both of those lists, the attributes and the examples are available within the companion post on Productivity Nexus, which I've linked to within this video's description. And within that post, you'll also find a growing assortment of templates and step-by-step -step tutorials that make it easy to configure these example automations yourself. And if you need a hand, automation, including these workflow audits, are a big part of my one-to-one -one workshops. And you'll find a form on Productivity Nexus you can submit for more information about my consulting. So why bother with automation? Well, when you consider them in aggregate, the benefits of automation are really immeasurable. It multiplies your productivity while reducing demand for your resources. By avoiding human errors, you ensure the consistency and quality of your work. Automation allows you to scale without hiring new team members. And when you delegate to robots, you can focus on your goals instead of menial tasks. And when we talk about automating your workflow, we mean we're configuring a computer to perform one or more actions in response to a specified trigger event. So in other words, if this happens, do that. So a few quick examples. If it's the 15th of the month, send an invoice. If that invoice is unpaid after two weeks, send the client a reminder and notify me in Slack. Or if a prospect becomes a client, send an onboarding form. And if that form is submitted, create a database record related to the client and generate a summary document. Or if a meeting is created in Outlook, create a corresponding meeting in Notion for managing it. So generally, there are two types of places where you can configure these sorts of automations. In some cases, you can configure automations directly within the apps they control, and they'll typically let you integrate with other apps you'd use alongside them. So for example, in accounting apps like QuickBooks and FreshBooks, you can schedule recurring invoices and integrate with apps like Bill to log your transactions automatically. You can configure form builders like Typeform and Tally to send new submissions to your your favorite database or spreadsheet app like Notion, Airtable, or Google Sheets. And within email marketing and e-commerce services, you can automate personalized messages when users take actions like subscribing or abandoning their shopping cart. And then for apps without native automation support or for more complex needs, platforms like Zapier and Make are dedicated to automation and integrations. They allow you to construct automated workflows in a flowchart format with custom triggers and multiple apps exchanging information. And if you use an iPhone, you've likely come across the Shortcuts app. That's basically a mobile version of Zapier or Mate, where you define a trigger and then actions that should follow it. And then some apps fall in a sort of gray area between both of these categories. Airtable and Coda are incredibly versatile apps for managing any type of information, and both offer robust automation capabilities with integrations. And in fact, before resorting to Zapier or Make, I typically check first to see if Airtable or Coda can do the trick. And in many cases, they can with a much simpler configuration and lower cost. And actually, I have an upcoming edition of the Productivity Nexus newsletter that's dedicated to what you can do with Airtable and Coda without needing the beefier automation apps like Zapier and Make. So make sure you're subscribed and keep an eye on your inbox for that. So like I said, one of the biggest hurdles to getting started with automation is knowing what to automate. But with a methodical approach, it's easy to identify automation opportunities in your workflow that deliver major gains with relatively little effort to configure. And to pinpoint those opportunities, you want to start by documenting your standard procedures and recurring actions. You can create an actual flowchart or just a simple bullet list. And actually, the Claude AI chatbot does a great job of converting bullet lists to flowcharts using the mermaid syntax. And as you think through your workflow, consider the bottom bottlenecks where the process is held up by tedious manual work or delayed responses from other people. Those are going to be the most fruitful opportunities for automation.
And then as you log and later review your actions, you want to identify those with attributes well suited for automation. And the more of these attributes an action contains, the better candidate it is for automating. So the green flags for automation are going to be rules. We talked about triggers and actions as if this happens, then do that. And this sort of logic is the top indicator of a process that should be automated. And then standardization. Anytime you are or could be populating a template or following a defined series of steps. Recurrence, actions that occur at a regular frequency or in particular circumstances. Repetition, processes where you perform the same action over and over, especially for multiple items in a list. Analysis, summarizing or finding trends in data. And syncing, collecting, sending, or synchronizing information among people or apps. So let's walk through some of the most commonly automated procedures for a better sense of where these green flag attributes manifest. And like I said, I'm actively creating tutorials and templates for these and other useful automations. So do be sure you're subscribed to the Productivity Nexus newsletter and my YouTube channel. And let me know in the comments if you have any particular templates you'd like me to prioritize. So accounting is really going to be the ripest function for automation. And it's one of the best places to learn how to configure automations. No invoice should be sent manually, nor should any reminder. And every payment you make and receive should be electronic and automatically logged. The system I build in Airtable tracks all of my accounts, transactions, invoices, orders, customers, and subscriptions much more effectively and intuitively than those clunky apps like QuickBooks. And then no matter the nature of your business or organization, you can automatically nurture customers or users through your cycle. You can automate your prospecting by scraping LinkedIn and other sources for your ideal audiences and then personalizing outreach to them. When a prospect submits an inquiry form, you can automatically respond with details. And in general, forms are just endlessly beneficial when it comes to collecting information. They require exactly what you need, deter unwanted senders, structure the submitted information, and trigger automations. And in a second, I'll break down my Formax system that leverages the power of forms. And then when you advance a lead from one stage to another where you're tracking them in Notion or Airtable or a traditional CRM, you can automatically send the message for that stage with personalized variables. One of my clients in New York buys hundreds of diamonds every year, so I built them a system in Airtable for managing each opportunity in the pipeline, from the initial inquiry to the final payment. And each of the 15 stages has a unique message that sends automatically with dynamic content that varies with different attributes of the deal. And when a prospect becomes a customer or a participant in your program, you can automatically send an onboarding form, which you can automatically feed into the places where you need the submitted information and perhaps create documents from templates. And then if you deal with a high volume of customers like I do, you'll really make life better for everyone by adding structure and automation to your system for supporting them. I mentioned my format framework that leverages forms, and it's really the best way to create that structure. The way that it works is that you only expose a support email address, which can be an alias of the email address you use personally, but you never actually expose your individual email address. And anytime that alias address is emailed, it should reply automatically with a message that politely directs them to your published FAQs. And in most cases, your FAQs can address about 90% of the emails you receive from standard customers. And if you've been responding manually for a while, you can use Google Gemini or Microsoft Copilot AI to identify and compose your FAQs automatically. And then for any of those FAQs that require additional information, you can link to a tightly structured contact form that conditionally displays the fields needed for that question. And then beyond the format framework, if you use Notion, Zendesk, or another platform for managing support tickets, you can automatically assign tickets to team members based on their current capacity and send them a notification. So in one of my favorite quotes, Peter Drucker said, you can't manage what you don't measure. No matter the type of work you do, regular reporting is a crucial element of your success. And in most cases, you can automate it at every step. 
Reporting typically occurs on a regular schedule or at the conclusion of a project or campaign, all of which can trigger automations. So you can automatically aggregate data from disparate sources. Then with the help of AI, you can automatically summarize it and extract trends. And you can take those summaries and insights and apply them automatically to a template, which you can then send automatically to everyone who needs the report. And if content publishing is a part of your marketing strategy, much of that process can be automated, especially if you manage your content production and publishing in a platform like Notion, Coda, or Airtable. And by the way, you definitely should manage it in a platform like Notion, Coda, or Airtable. You can automatically aggregate inspiration from effective publishers who share your target audience. You can notify teammates when they're on deck for a particular responsibility. You can automatically prompt AI to adapt posts for other channels. You can schedule posts to go live on each platform. And you can automatically repurpose and reschedule content for a future date. And for email newsletters in particular, automation is incredibly useful for trickling engaging content to a new subscriber or re-engaging dormant subscribers before permanently scrubbing them from your list. And if you manage a growing team, automation can support the employee cycle similar to how it supports your customer cycle. So as with every type of information you manage, I strongly recommend tracking prospective hires in a database within an app like Notion, Coda, Airtable, or at least Google Sheets. And your application form can then feed directly into that platform. And as a candidate shifts from one stage to the next, the system can automatically send relevant messages and request any needed information. And then when you find that perfect fit for your open position, you can automate onboarding by sending them forms for the information you need, distribute that information where it needs to go, create accounts across your services, and generate documents from templates. And then automation can save so much of that time that you inevitably spend coordinating meeting times by email. Most calendar apps, including Google Calendar, Outlook, and Notion Calendar, offer a native way to share your availability. And tools like Calendly and Doodle address more complex scheduling needs for groups. And then across all of your software, systems, and procedures, you have particular circumstances when you'd like to be alerted, like a specified amount of time since a prospect was contacted, that an invoice remains unpaid, or that a task is overdue. So for any condition you can define, you can configure an automatic notification to receive by email, Slack, or even a push notification on your phone. And as you've likely heard me say before, one of my core principles of systemization is maintaining a single source of truth for each entity you manage, like contacts, tasks, and events. And database-centric apps like Notion, Airtable, and Coda are perfect for managing them all in one place. But of course, you'll continue to work with and reference those entity types in other apps. With automation and integrations, you can keep them all in sync. And then lastly, you know it already, but you probably underutilize it. And that's email filters that automatically sort incoming messages into tightly structured folders or labels. I manage different types of emails at different points in my day, so it's important to keep them out of sight and out of mind until the time I've deliberately allocated for them. So that'll give you plenty of ammunition to begin identifying your top automation opportunities. Like I said, you'll find the full roundup of green flag attributes and common automation examples in the companion post on Productivity Nexus. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the newsletter so you won't miss those step-by-step -step tutorials I'm working on now. And let me know in the comments if you have any particular automations you'd like me to document first.